Hello and welcome back to YouTube or to Traders Improve Podcast, wherever you are listening or watching to this. And I did a recent podcast, a housekeeping episode two days ago, depending on when I'm going to upload this. And I asked you to send me questions and I got already a bunch of them. So keep sending them my way. You can go to tradesitecom slash podcast. There is a form waiting for you where you can send me your questions or topping requests which you would like me to talk about in ongoing videos or podcasts. And this email that I got goes something like this. I found out about Forex trading six months ago and I decided to try and, uh, to, and I decided to try and learn as much as I can via YouTube and books before jumping in. So far so good. Um, the email continues. I love this. I love the videos you make as they are quite informative and easy to understand. My question to you is, I feel as though there is so much conflicting information available out there and just was wondering what advice you would give to someone who really wants to learn as much as possible and change their life. Should I start trading right away with limited knowledge or learn as much as possible while demo trading? So this is a very, very important question that at one point or another people will come to realize you get very excited about trading and then you jump into the markets or maybe you start digging into um, material education and you find out that there are just thousands and thousands of videos, articles, books and many, many different opinions, strategies and concepts are, are being thrown your way. Indicators, price action, news trading, higher time frame, lower time frame and the list goes on and on and on. So here are my five tips that will help you improve your learning curve, have much, much more fun doing it and also have very targeted um, progress, hopefully. So the first one is consistency. You need to be consistent. Everybody, when you ask them what do you want to do or what you want to achieve, people want to have consistently profitable results. However, it all starts with your process and with your actions and how you approach trading. So you should have always consistent or a consistent approach and then your results will be more consistent. Of course, in the beginning, you won't necessarily have consistently profitable results, but at least your results won't be all over the place. So I really recommend that you choose a trading strategy and a style that really resonates with you. And it doesn't really matter in the beginning what you choose, just find something in someone that you can relate to, that you feel is sharing good information, concise information, and then, well, subscribe to it or just follow it and try it out. Stick to, to an approach for months and take at least uh, two or 300 trades following one strategy and one approach. Of course, I cannot stress this enough. In the beginning, your results won't be immediately profitable, but at least you will be able to eliminate a lot of noise out there. And I did this in the beginning. Um, I had the same issues and I didn't know where to start, so I just took not the first best, but I, I invested in some courses and some strategies that made sense to me. And although I'm not trading the same way today, not even close, but it helped me to have consistency in the approach and it helped me to just streamline what I'm doing. And you will pick up a lot of things in the beginning about risk management, um, reading charts, managing yourself. This is the most important part. Uh, it's not about, and this brings me to the to the second point. What is the goal here initially uh, in a in a, in new or for new traders? Of course, you might say that you want to make a lot of money very quickly because that's what trading is all about, right? But in the beginning, and when I say beginning, it means that at least the first one, two, or three years. And if you have been that long in trading and you haven't seen any positive results, then this might also be um, yeah might also be a tip for you. Ask yourself, what is really the goal initially? Whenever you start something new, not only trading, but a new hobby, a new career, or <clears throat> even a new subject in school, your goal initially should not be that you are suddenly, um, from the get-go, you're not going to be the first and the best person in this field. What you wanna do is that, <clears throat> sorry, that you wanna um, lay a very solid foundation. You wanna learn as much as you can without being all over the place. So really understand that you need to detach yourself from the from performance goals. Don't look at your balance in your account and especially in the first few months, um, don't judge yourself based on results because the results won't be won't be great. I can I can promise you that no matter how great your teacher will be and how 
how easy and how effective things may seem, um, you need to really detach yourself from performance goals and don't focus on, on making money right from the get-go. Focus on really on the process or, and on the execution, which means that we or you, me, I, we are always the weakest link in our trading um, process, in our trading business, so to speak, which means that you might have the best strategy, you might have a great strategy, but if you cannot follow the rules and if you don't know how to manage yourself, then the best strategy won't help you. So focus on really building a solid foundation, focus on managing um, your your expectations, focus on building um, discipline, focus on building a routine. Try to make as, as few, as little process um, mistakes as possible, which means that try to avoid breaking rules, try to avoid um, chasing trades, try to avoid making mistakes in risk management, Really just focus on building a solid foundation where you can elim eliminate stress from your trading, eliminate noise as well from your routine, and just build a solid structure for your business. Understand that you are going to play the long game, and depending on how old you are, let's say you are in your mid-30s, um, let's say you want to do this f as, a, as, a, as a replacement for your job. Of course, maybe your job might not be the best right now and you are looking to um, to change that with trading and you want to replace it with trading. But understand that this is not going to happen within the, one, the next one, two or three years. But even if it takes you five years to get there, you might be in your early 40s. This is still worth it. In Germany, you would be working until your late 60s. So you still have um, 25, maybe even 30 years ahead of you that would, you would be spending in your nine to five job. And many traders, they will never get there. Why? Because they want to get there as, as quickly as possible. And then they approach trading from a very wrong perspective. If you want to force, force something, then your actions won't be where they should be and your focus won't be where it should be. You will take bad trades. You will um, push your risk management too much. You will judge your performance very incorrectly and you might not even be um, satisfied with um, with profitable results if they are not in the hundreds and hundreds of percentages and this is very very important really focus on or get your focus right play the wrong, long game and make sure that you you accept it um, that you are going to invest maybe three four five years to to learn everything as you uh, the, or as much as you can and this brings me to um, the next point feedback loop you need to have a way of reviewing what you are doing. Um, if you have been trading for a while, just ask yourself, do you remember your last five trades? Do you remember your last 10 trades? The answer probably will be no. I certainly cannot remember my last five trades, barely. Um, certainly if I, if I extend it to the last 10 trades, I won't remember anything or not too much. And this really highlights the importance of having a feedback loop and having a way of how you can review your trades and how you can learn from your mistakes. People always say in trading that losses are just a part of doing business and you learn from your losses. But um, the reality is that most people, they don't learn from their losses because they have no way of reviewing it and then they will just repeat the same things over and over again. You may not initially need the most sophisticated journaling routine and just having a, a screenshot collection might be already a good starting point. If you're doing nothing, this is, uh, this is um, way, way better than just doing nothing. So for every trade, take a screenshot when you enter it, take a screenshot when you exit. And then after a while, you can, you can go back to you, through your trades, to your screenshots and just look at them. Do they look very similar, which is a good thing, especially if you're trading um, technical analysis or based on technical analysis, then your trades should, should look uh, roughly similar. And if they don't, then try to, to um, look for what did you do wrong. It might be already enough to have a, a piece of paper on your, on your desk, split it in, in the middle, um, and on the right-hand side, you write down what you did well, and on the, right, on the left side, you write what you didn't do well. And this will quickly give you a good idea of what are the mistakes that you keep repeating and what are the things that you are good at. And over time, you will be able to improve your, your process step by step. And really make sure that um, you play this for the long game. Understand that this may take a while, but if you just get better a little bit day by day by day, you will see big improvements over the long game. And I've been working with many traders, hundreds of traders over the years. 
And I've seen many quit because they are not very satisfied with their results over the short term, but they, they don't really know how much they could achieve over the long term. If you just dedicate um, one year and it's almost time, 2020 is almost here, it's the end of the year right now, but it doesn't matter when you're watching this or when you're listening to this. Take a year and really focus on just eliminating one, one mistake or one flaw from your trading week after week. Just focus on the biggest thing. You might use um, what I like to do is um, index cards where you write down things. Um, just one primer, one flaw, one thought that you want to keep in mind for the next week. Write it here. Put it on your, on your screen where, where you can see it at all times during the week and help you remember um, help you remember the thing that you want to keep in mind and just focusing on one thing at a time and making targeted um, adjustments and targeted improvements will make a very very big difference over the long term so very important to have a feedback loop mental capital is the next part and mental capital basically means that you your emotions and how you do you really enjoy trading um, is it something that you look forward to Many traders, they will get to a point where they are burning and they've lost all their mental capital. And whereas you can always get new money for your trading account, no matter how much you lose, um, you will always be able to get new money somehow eventually. You won't be able to renew your mental capital or it will be very, very difficult. And I've seen many traders that um, they keep repeating the same mistakes. They blow up trading account after trading account because they're not following the previous um, posts or the previous points that at one point they will get very frustrated with trading and with themselves and it's very likely for those traders to then to then quit trading because they're just not enjoying it anymore and then what's the point of really trading everything becomes a sacrifice and not something that you really like to do and this is something that you really need to guard against you need to really make sure that at no at no point will you will you lose the, the joy for trading and this is very, very important. So look out for that. And the previous points that will help you get there. Um, really make sure that you eliminate noise from your approach. Um, make sure that your goals set in accordance to where you are right now. And also play the long game. Protect your mental capital at all costs. And having a support group is also something that I would, would really, really re um, encourage you to have. Trading is a very lonely uh, profession. It can feel very isolated at times. And we are always alone with our thoughts as, as traders. We are very hard and we can be very hard on ourselves because, well, the results initially, they won't be great. And as traders, we have to deal with um, losing trades um, quite a lot. And just having a support group where you can reach out to people um, can make a very, very big difference. Also, in this context, having an accountability partner can make a very big difference where you just have a person that you can talk to about what is going on. The person um, hopefully won't judge you. Uh, make sure to communicate right with the person to just provide constructive feedback. Stay away from most of those public um, forums because those are very toxic places. Twitter can be such a toxic place as well. And also make sure that you surround yourself with people that are like-minded, that maybe hopefully have the, a similar strategy so that you can um, exchange um, your thoughts and your feelings uh, as well around those ideas and those are the things that you really should focus on in the beginning and when I s say beginning um, I mean probably the, the first <clears throat> one to th uh, three years this is um, really those are your beginner phases as, as, a, as a trader and when it comes to trading demo trading is the the, the function and the benefits of demo trading they are very very limited Demo trading can be good to just get to know your platform. Demo trading can be good to learn about execution. How do you place a trade? How do you size a position? And all of that things. But in the end, as Moritz said during our last uh, webinar, he has never seen a profitable demo trader um, that, or he has never seen a, a losing demo trader. Uh, that's the way. Um, demo traders are always profitable at one point. But obviously this will never relate to live trading because live trading and, and demo trading are, they have nothing to do with each other. There's nothing um, similar between demo and live trading. Everything that is hard in trading is excluded in demo trading. Emotions related to money, to holding on to winning trades, to cutting losing trades, to growing an account very, very slowly. Those are the things that you're not dealing with in demo trading. And those are the only things that make trading hard in the live environment. So limit demo as much as you can. Get a live account, even if it's a small live account, 
but small doesn't mean like 50 or 100 dollars it means at least having a few hundred dollars where losing it it, it already does hurt and you are more inclined and you're more likely to learn from your from your losses if if it hurts a little bit obviously your trading account should not be so big that if you lose it then you won't be able to put more food on your table but it should have a, a good amount so that losing hurts a little bit and it stings and you are you you see the the value of then improving step by step and you're not going to take completely random and dumb trades and this is it this is i think a very good um, starting point for for most of the beginning traders and if you can follow that you will have more fun in trading your progress will be much much quicker and for, more importantly you will have progress i see many traders after years of trading um, that they have nothing to show for they are still acting like amateurs and this is very very um, very sad to see because it doesn't have to be that way so really focus on those steps and um, yeah let me know in the comments below if you like those videos and really make sure to go to tradesitycom slash podcast fill out the form you don't have to send in your name or your email do it anonymously if you uh, if you feel that you feel embarrassed to ask or you just want to ask something that you think might be um, too amateur to amateurish whatever it might be I'm, I'm really happy to do all types of podcasts whatever it is that is um, concerning you and um, you can always be sure that there are a few other people out there who have the same struggles and who would love to hear about those things so thank you for listening or watching wherever you are consuming this and until the next time